Hello again and welcome to Tips with Andrew. I am Andrew Sapiano. Thank you so much for joining me on this happy Tuesday. Not so much weather-wise outside here in Canada. We are in a bit of a blizzard, but that's okay. <clears throat> Sometimes it happens, we get through it. It's actually really nice to look at. It's not so much nice if you're driving in it or if you have places to be, but if you're, you know, you're just at home checking it out, it actually looks really nice. The wind is rattling and everything. It's uh, perfect golf weather, if you ask me. I think so. Um, so uh, just a quick update before I get started. My uh, course on weight loss for beginners, five hidden secrets to keep the weight off forever, is uh, just about in the finishing processes. So if you're interested in early bird access or how to get your hands or uh, get some input in before I'm finished, definitely drop me a comment, send me a message, get you rocking and rolling. Uh, that's what I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about here. Um, exercise is one of those things that gets told by multiple of peoples. Uh, the benefits, the health benefits of exercise have been documented for years and centuries and all sorts of goodness. But the problem more than anything is when you exercise, it hurts. You've got places that you didn't even know you had places that start hurting and you're going, this is, is this the end? Is this it? Am I dying? Am I even going to come back from this? Is there even a point in coming back from this? Holy Toledo's. A lot of times it's not fun. And it, it, as much as you know, you're, uh, you're, you want to keep going and you want to, you know, no pain, no gain type thing, right? If it hurts, it's going to very much deteriorate your uh, confidence and your motivation to keep going. So that's where I wanted to come on, talk a little bit about tips that help me. Uh, I get sore. Beginners get sore. It's not, sorry, it's not just beginners that get sore. Seasoned veterans, uh, athletes, bodybuilders, everybody, people that work out for pleasure <laughs> and for their job get injured. And that's just the way it is. So don't feel that it's just something that you're doing or not doing or uh, this is specific to you because it's not and there is tips to help you and there's ways around it and um, actually there's not really too many ways around it. It's going to hurt because your muscles, you know, they don't get used for a while and then they get used. So, you know, that's where I come on. I want to give a couple tips that help me sort of get over it, help with, uh, you know, motivation, this, that, yada, yada, tips that help me. Hopefully they help you. Let's get right into it. Tip number one is a massage. Ah, this is a great way. It's also a great excuse to go for a massage, right? If you're, uh, if you haven't gotten one in a long time, or if you're thinking about getting one, or you know whatever your reasons are behind it, this is uh, this will be very beneficial for your muscles. Um, for me, I like I like massaging wherever I can. You know, if it's like lower back or whatever, you can't really get too much to it. Um, but anywhere that you can uh, and you want and you and you're able to give it a nice massage, uh, there's those roller balls, the foam rollers. Those I definitely suggest those if um, you, if that's what helps you. For me, I like to use lotions. Um, it 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 helps with. Uh, it's, I add essential oils, so then I use the lotion, and the lotion helps to. Um, uh, slow the absorption of the oil. Also, too, it makes it for easier massage, right? If you're just trying to massage your skin, it it's it's not really the um, the easiest thing to do. So that's why I use a lotion to just sort of allow myself to get that good massage in there. But you know, there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing better than going for a professional massage. I think it's illegal nowadays. Um, but if you're able to, definitely. Uh, try and 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 even if that means just you know <laughs> you maybe you have to beg, uh, borrow and steal against your significant other, or maybe you just have to buck up and give each other a massage, right? Sometimes you just got to give give what you want to get in return. So if you give your significant other a massage, you know it's you're you're more inclined to to get a yes when you ask for it. Uh, that's just side tip if you. Just just one and you're not willing to give one, you're probably going to get told where to go. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's going to cause all sorts of other soreness. And <laughs> I can't help you with that. I'm sorry. I mean, I probably could, but that's not what this video is about. Um, so massage the area, 
uh, what you're looking to do is you're looking to sort of get blood flow pumping into that area, um, allowing your muscles to, to expand and contract and do what they do, uh, what, what they're designed to do, right? And if you're, if, you're, if you're stiff, if you're tight, if you're sore, if you're, it's, it's, it doesn't make for a fun game. And um, uh, massaging is definitely, you know, get right in there if you can, as, as, as deep as you can, right? Don't try and hurt yourself, but as deep as you can, and then just give it a nice, a nice rub around. That's, so you're, 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 what you're looking for is to stimulate blood flow. That, that's basically it. Ma, my next tip is to stretch. I love stretch. I love stretching really at all times of the days. I don't really mind if I'm sore or not, um, but stretching for me, it, it helps alleviate a lot of the tension, a lot of the stress uh, that that comes with you know contracting muscles and all sorts of that stuff. Um, what what you what you're really looking to do is just kind of stretch like as far as you can without hurting yourself, um, but also so that a little bit more than before. So when you when you feel it. Go a little bit more, just a, just a hair more, um, because you want to really feel that stretch. You want to get that get that stretch right in you, right? You're looking to um, to to expand your muscles, sort of um, uh, allow them a little bit more breathing room. Think about it. Uh, if your if your muscles are sore, they're contracting, right? You want to try and stretch them out and get them get them to do to work the way that they're supposed to work. And, and for me, I love stretching, like I said, at any, at any time of the day, no matter what. So if I'm sore, I know that I just need to stretch it out a little bit and it, it'll start feeling better, right? Groin injuries are pretty much the worst. Uh, hamstring, those will bring you down, right? You're not really able to do too much with injuries and soreness to those areas. So that's where stretching right away, my, my groin, I, I get right into it and then I'll do whatever, right? Sit my butt down, um, really stretch it out, really um, you know, point my leg out the other way, whatever I need to do to really feel that stretch right in there. Uh, groin for me is where it gets really bad. Hamstrings are bad for me too. I don't normally get too much soreness in my upper body unless I go really hard, right? So for me, I, uh, I did have some soreness in my arm a little bit ago and I decided after not working out for a long time that I was gonna start with, what did I do? 75 pound curls. And I was going to do three sets of 10 with those. I think I might have been up in the 80 pound range too. And I was going to, you know, and I, and I was, right? Getting buff, right? Big strong man over here. Can't tell me what to do. I'm a man. But damn, that was not a fun game after that. Oh man. It was one of those where like I would, I would close my arm and it would start twitching. And it's like, ow. And then to open it, I would have to literally open it. I'd have to grab my hand and just open my arm because I couldn't physically move it. So for me, a lot of my injuries and a lot of injuries in general come with um, improper form or trying to do too much that your body's not used to, right? So for me, I, if I'm not exercising for a long time and then I'm trying to lift 80 pounds with the curls, it's gonna, that, you know, my, my arms, my muscles aren't used to that. So that's where I need to, um, um, I, I need to, that's where I need to, or that's where I understand that that was sort of self-inflicted, right? That's the pain that I caused myself. And maybe uh, the next time, we're going to uh, we're, we're going to try a little bit less, right? Or or we're not going to do so many sets or so many reps, or maybe work your way up to it, right? So um, that that's that's one of the things really more than anything. Um, stretching is going to help you after the fact. Also, stretching beforehand is going to be so, like sort of a preventative measure. But at, at the same time, like I said, when, for me, it's from me lifting too much after a long uh, period off. So maybe that's something that you're doing, something to look into. My next tip is to rest. And rest is going to be, um, it, this is one of those things where either you rest because you're tired or your body is going to force you to rest because you, um, uh, because you are not physically able to go anymore. You are 
it's too sore to keep going or you're at, you reached a point where maybe you pulled a muscle or you tore a muscle or you, you know, improper form, un, uh, not stretching, all that sorts of stuff can lead to uh, de dehydration. Even that's another one, right? So definitely want to, um, you definitely want to think about the rest as a sort of step, a next step, a preventative measure even, but that, like I like I mentioned before, if you don't rest and you keep going and and you're you know you're if even if you're sore and you want to keep going, your your body will eventually break down and will force you to rest. So that's where I mentioned before: either you rest on your own or your body will force you to rest uh, via injury, uh, via uh, burnout, right? And your body is not, also not designed to go hard every single day. You need to actually incorporate a rest day to kind of give your body that um, the, the proper time that it needs to rest and recover. My next tip is to just keep going. A lot of the times uh, being sore can really deter you from wanting to keep going to from from you know getting up and keep doing it because it hurts right and and a lot of times we don't want to keep doing what hurts if something hurts right I mean way off topic but if you put your hand on a burner and it hurts you're not gonna keep your hand on that burner because it hurts right you're gonna take it off and you're gonna do what you can to avoid that burner at all costs, right? So that's, if you think about it realistically, that's kind of the same way with exercise. When it starts hurting, you can, you got, you tend to sort of ease off. Um, you know, I'm sore, so I'm going to take tomorrow off. And then tomorrow comes and you're still sore and you're like, ah, well, you know, maybe I'll take the next day off. And then the next day comes and you're like, oh, well, I got to do that thing and I got this project. And then the next day comes and you're like, oh, man, I got a family time. And, and, and now you're a week and you haven't done anything, right? Because all because you were sore in the beginning. So that's where I say just to keep going. Uh, keep sort of fighting through it. Uh, there's, a, there's an old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And that's really what you need to, uh, to, 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 to bring your mindset to that sort of state. Um, but this is where I mentioned before, maybe consider less, right? Less weights, less sets, less reps, uh, just less build yourself up to it. You know, maybe if you, uh, <clears throat> if you want to do the curls, for, for me, perfect example, I would just tell myself to start at maybe 10 or 20 pounds and don't go 80. Um, but that, that's, that's where you want to, you, you want to keep going because when you're, when, when you stop and your muscles sort of, you know, settle, I guess, if you will, when you get going again, it's going to be even that much more painful. So that's why you need to, you want to keep going. You want to keep being consistent, but at the same time, maybe, maybe settle it down just a hair, right? Just a touch and, um, and look, look at, look at your routine as a routine, right? So maybe you're doing stuff, you're doing stuff that's more than you are able to account for and, or can, uh, remove a couple of steps or a couple of things, or just change up your routine a little bit. My next tip is to stay hydrated. This is going to be basically the be all and end all of exercise, because if you're not hydrated, you're, you're, our body makes up roughly 60% water. So if you're not hydrated, you are definitely going to uh, have your muscles working in, in conditions that they're not designed to work in. You need to have water, you need to stay hydrated, you need to keep your muscles going. That's you think muscle cramps, right? Muscle spasms. Again, those are all things that come from dehydration. And you, when you're dehydrated, your your you know your mouth is is um, you get that cotton feeling. You get <laughs> really huffing and puffing, panting. Um, and 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 another thing, just side tip sort of thing. When you're exercising, you want to keep replacing your fluids because you want to replace what you lose while sweating, right? So if you're not replacing your fluids, then you're not giving your body the proper uh, nutrition, vitamins, minerals that it needs in order to per to perform at a high level, at an optimal level, right? So all you're doing is you're just, you're having your muscles work 
without their, you know, sort of personal protective equipment, right? If you think PPE, uh, it's not really necessary, but if you've got uh, uh, gloves, right? Uh, exercise gloves, maybe like a belt, a back brace, something like that, a knee brace. This is all stuff that you wear, right? But think about your body like that. Your, your muscles need water, need hydration in order to perform at optimal levels. So keeping hydrated, definitely a, a, a glass of water, roughly 30 minutes before you start uh, exercising. Then you want to keep your bottle with you. And basically what you want to do is basically your sense of thirst will let you know when you're hydrated. So you want to when you're thirsty, definitely drink. This is actually one of the reasons that uh, athletes learn to drink on schedule so that they don't actually have to think about when they're drinking or think about the fact that their body is hydrated or not because uh, they drink on schedule, right? So always they are thirsty at that time, right? We're creatures of habit. So at that time they're thirsty, that way they know that they can keep their hydration going uh, all day and keep, keep their levels at peak performance, right? My next tip is to find accountability. And this one also goes along with, you know, being sore and motivation, uh, uplifting, stuff like that. When you find an accountability partner, it's going to make it a lot harder for you to let them down. It's always easy for us to let ourselves down. We are our worst critics as well as our most softest defense, right? Like, oh yeah, oh you poor baby, don't worry about it. You just take the week off, it's fine. But your accountability partner will keep you going and then when you're sore, you just say, hey, like, hey dude, I'm... I'm sore today, man. And they're like, that's okay. You know, we keep going. We're, they're going to come and pick you up and they're going to come and, and, and help you out. But that's where I say, just tone it down a little bit, right? You don't have to go hard always. But your accountability partner will be great for those days when you think you're, or when you are too sore to do anything and you want to, you want to keep going. You really do, but you're so sore that you can't even do it. And that's where you're like, okay, fine. I can just take a day off. I can take two days off, but your accountability partner won't let you do that. It, it, they will keep you motivated, keep you accountable, keep you responsible, all sorts of things like that. So that's why, and, and everything is better with a buddy anyways, right? So you don't want to, you don't want to just Keep it all to yourself if you're not that type of person. If you're not the type of person that can get self-motivated, I definitely recommend finding an accountability partner or figuring out a way to get yourself self-motivated, right? When you're talking about injuries, soreness to um, your muscles after exercise, it can be very easy to not want to keep going, to want to give up, to not do that ever again. And with an accountability partner, with a buddy, with a motivational system, it's going to keep you going when you feel too down to get up for yourself. My last tip more than anything is essential oils. I love using essential oils, especially when I'm hurting in any sort of fashion. Um, essential oils like cypress are actually great for um, the, their anti-inflammatory great for uh, muscle spasms, right? Cramps, that's all the stuff that this is good for. I like this one. I actually use this one in a custom blend. This is another thing that I love about the oils too is I make my own custom blends and stuff like that. So I have this one as, uh, this one as part of my, uh, as part of my muscle uh, aching blend, I guess, if you will. Um, another oil is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is very powerful anti-inflammatory. It's also got cooling properties in it. So that'll help when uh, when your muscles feel really inflamed and you want to cool them down. But eucalyptus is cool because it was actually used during the war. Uh, the eucalyptus plant was used during the war to help help um, when fighters were were hurting and, and in, and in uh, the infirmary, the hospital, stuff like that, right? And uh, it's also great for uh, opening up the airways, you know, allowing for clear breathing. I think Vicks Vapor Rub. I like this one. I really like this one actually. And then my uh, my favorite thing to use more than anything, the reason that I got started on essential oils is the Deep Blue Rub Lotion. This is that lotion that I was talking about earlier when I'm giving my myself a massage. It's got peppermint in it, so it's great for cooling. Um, and the and and like I mentioned before. Um, uh, essential oils at the base of it are volatile aromatic compounds. All that means is that they just switch states 
from a liquid to a gas very quickly. So if you have a lotion, and, and I love this one, but you can use any lotion or carrier oil, think cooking oil, uh, canola oil, olive oil, stuff like that. Um, and that will slow the absorption and allow for deeper penetration and uh, uh, in, enhanced added benefit, right? That's all I got for you for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope we got some value out of this. Feel free to share this with your friends, uh, family member, perhaps somebody from your team that you feel needs to hear this. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about essential oils or how to get your hands on some of these cool stuff that I talk about or how to get your, your hands on some early bird access into my weight loss course, definitely drop me a comment, send me a message, and we'll get you rocking and rolling. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I love you guys. Look forward to talking to you again. Bye for now.